Good evening, and welcome to Third Church of Christ Scientist of New York City. Let's begin with singing hymn number 181, 181. I'll read the third verse. We would learn, O oh gracious Father, to reflect thy healing love. May we all awake to praise thee for thy good gifts from above. Number 181. I'll read from the Bible and from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. The subject of this evening's readings is Awakening. The Bible, Psalms. I laid me down and slept. I awaked, for the Lord sustained me. As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. Awake up, my glory, awake, psaltery and harp. I myself will awake early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations. For thy mercy is great unto the heavens, and thy truth unto the clouds. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. Isaiah, awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. John. 
Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that, saith he to his, to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest in sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, to the intent ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about fifteen furlongs off, and many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat, sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled, and said, Where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold, how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man, which opened the eyes of the blind, have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus, therefore, again groaning to himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, Loose him, and let him go. 
Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. Proverbs. Give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. Matthew. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto his disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch with me. And he went a little farther, and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples, and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn, Toward the first day of the week came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. First Corinthians. Brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that he was seen of 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and last of all, he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. As in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. 
but every man in his own order. Christ, the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Christ's at his coming. Ephesians. Awake, thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Now I'll read correlative passages from the Christian Science textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. Jesus said of Lazarus, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Jesus restored Lazarus by the understanding that Lazarus had never died, not by an admission that his body had died and then lived again, had Jesus believed that Lazarus had lived or died in his body, the master would have stood on the same plane of belief as those who buried the body, and he could not have resuscitated it. When you can waken yourself or others out of the belief that all must die, you can then exercise Jesus' spiritual power to reproduce the presence of those who have thought they died, but not otherwise. There is one possible moment when those living on the earth and those called dead can commune together, and that is the moment previous to the transition, the moment when the link between their opposite beliefs is being sundered. In the vestibule through which we pass from one dream to another dream, or when we awake from earth's sleep, to the grand verities of life, the departing may hear the glad welcome of those who have gone before. The ones departing may whisper this vision, name the face that smiles on them and the hand which beckons them as one at Niagara with eyes open only to that wonder, forgets all else and breathes aloud his rapture. When being is understood, life will be recognized as neither material nor finite, but as infinite, as God, universal good, and the belief that life or mind was ever in a finite form or good and evil will be destroyed. Then it will be understood that spirit never entered matter and was therefore never raised from matter when advanced to spiritual being and the understanding of God, man can no longer commune with matter, neither can he return to it any more than a tree can return to its seed. Neither will man seem to be corporeal, but he will be an individual consciousness characterized by the divine spirit as idea, not matter. Suffering, sinning, dying beliefs are unreal. When divine science is universally understood, they will have no power over man, for man is immortal and lives by divine authority. The sinless joy, the perfect harmony and immortality of life, possessing unlimited divine beauty and goodness, without a single bodily pleasure or pain, constitutes the only veritable, indestructible man whose being is spiritual. This state of existence is scientific and intact, a perfection discernible only by those who have the final understanding of Christ in divine science. Death can never hasten this state of existence, for death must be overcome, not submitted to, before immortality appears. Better the suffering which awakens mortal mind from its fleshly dream than the false pleasures which tend to perpetuate this dream. If sickness is real, it belongs to immortality. If true, it is a part of truth. Would you attempt, with drugs or without, to destroy a quality or condition of truth? But if sickness and sin are illusions, the awakening from this mortal dream or illusion 
will bring us into health, holiness, and immortality. This awakening is the forever coming of Christ, the advanced appearing of truth, which casts out error and heals the sick. This is the salvation which comes through God, the divine principle, love, as demonstrated by Jesus. Mortals need not fancy that belief in the experience of death will awaken them to glorified being. Universal salvation rests on progression and probation and is unattainable without them. Heaven is not a locality, but a divine state of mind in which all the manifestations of mind are harmonious and immortal because sin is not there and man is found having no righteousness of his own, but in possession of the mind of the Lord, as the scripture says. In the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. So we read in Ecclesiastes. This text has been transformed into the popular proverb, as the tree falls, so it must lie. As man falleth asleep, so shall he awake. As death findeth mortal man, so shall he be after death until probation and growth shall effect the needed change. Mind never becomes dust. No resurrection from the grave awaits mind or life, for the grave has no power over either. No final judgment awaits mortals, for the judgment day of wisdom comes hourly and continually, even the judgment by which mortal man is divested of all material error. As for spiritual error, there is none. When the last mortal fault is destroyed, then the final trump will sound, which will end the battle of truth with error and mortality. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, here, prophecy pauses. Divine science alone can compass the heights and depths of being and reveal the infinite. Truth will be to us the resurrection and the life, only as it destroys all error and the belief that mind, the only immortality of man, can be fettered by the body and life controlled by death. A sinful, sick, and dying mortal is not the likeness of God, the perfect and eternal. When the sick or the sinning awake to realize their need of what they have not, they will be receptive of divine science, which gravitates towards soul and away from material sense, removes thought from the body, and elevates even mortal mind to the contemplation of something better than disease or sin. The true idea of God gives the true understanding of life and love, robs the graves of victory, takes away all sin and the delusion that there are other minds and destroys mortality. The effects of Christian science are not so much seen as felt it is the still, small voice of truth uttering itself. We are either turning away from this utterance or we are listening to it and going up higher. Willingness to become as a little child and to leave the old for the new renders thought receptive of the advanced idea. Gladness to leave the false landmarks and joy to see them disappear this disposition helps to precipitate the ultimate harmony. The purification of sense and self is a proof of progress. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Unless the harmony and immortality of man are becoming more apparent, we are not gaining the true idea of God and the body will reflect what governs it, whether it be truth or error, understanding or belief, spirit or matter. Therefore, acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. Be watchful, sober, and vigilant.
The way is straight and narrow, which leads to the understanding that God is the only life. It is a warfare with the flesh in which we must conquer sin, sickness, and death, either here or hereafter, certainly before we can reach the goal of spirit or life in God. The belief that matter and mind are one, that matter is awake at one time and asleep at another, sometimes presenting no appearance of mind, this belief culminates in another belief that man dies. Science reveals man, material man, as never the real being. The dream or belief goes on whether our eyes are closed or open. In sleep, memory and consciousness are lost from the body and they wander whither they will, apparently with their own separate embodiment. When we are awake, we dream of the pains and pleasures of matter. Who will say, even though he does not understand Christian science, that this dream, rather than the dreamer, may not be mortal man? Who can rationally say otherwise when the dream leaves mortal man intact in body and thought, although the so-called dreamer is unconscious? For right reasoning, there should be but one fact before the thought, namely spiritual existence. In reality, there is no other existence since life cannot be united to its unlikeness mortality. Being is holiness, harmony, immortality. It is already proved that a knowledge of this, even in small degree, will uplift the physical and moral standard of mortals, will increase longevity, will purify and elevate character. Thus, progress will finally destroy all error and bring immortality to light. Let's pray together for a few moments in silence and then pray aloud together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Let's sing hymn number 200. O daughter of Zion, awake from thy sadness, awake for thy foes shall oppress thee no more. And bright o'er thy hills dawns the day star of gladness. Arise, for the night of thy sorrow is o'er. Number 200.
this church is a branch of the Mother Church, the first Church of Christ Scientist in Boston, Massachusetts. We hold Sunday services at 11 a.m. and Wednesday testimony meetings at 7.30 p.m. We also have services in Spanish, Sundays at 12 noon and Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. All services are held in person and online and all are welcome. Third Church offers Sunday school classes in person and online for children and teens. These free one-hour classes are available each Sunday. At Sunday school, students learn how much God loves them and cares for them. They also learn about the Bible characters and lessons and the healing power of prayer. For more information on times and classes, please send us an email, thirdchurch at thirdchurchnyc.com. Members and friends are encouraged to attend in person or online the annual meeting of the Mother Church on Monday, June 3rd at 1 p.m. This year's theme is Joy in the Living Church. To register, please visit christianscience.com slash annual meeting. There you can also check out the weekend activities leading up to Monday's annual meeting or click on the banner on our website homepage, thirdchurchnyc.com, for more information. This meeting is now open for all to share experiences of healing and spiritual insights that prove God's ever presence and power in their lives. If you're listening by telephone and would like to speak, press star six and wait until your line is unmuted. Please speak directly into the microphone of your telephone. Your message will be easier to hear if you do not use the speaker function. If you're watching via Zoom, you can choose the raise your hand icon or unmute yourself and speak. Thank you very much for those wonderful readings. And it reminds me of I grew up in Brooklyn, and uh, <clears throat> when I was in maybe grade school or high school, my mother decided we're going to, I grew to Fourth Church, Brooklyn, we we're going to go visit First Church on one Wednesday night. And after the service, I was talking to this man, I'll never forget, his name was Mr. Lamar. And he seemed like a nice man, talking to him. And a woman comes up to me afterwards and said, this man was dead. I said, he was dead? He said, yes. And he said, would you mind telling me about it? And then he proceeded to tell me, this is in the days, old days of New York, when we had trolley cars. And he was getting on a trolley car and he slipped and fell, and the operator didn't see him fall, and he closed the door on his foot and dragged him for blocks. And he was taken up dead and thrown in the morgue. And, I, and <clears throat> he said to me, he got up and walked out. And I said, well, wait a minute. When when you were there, and to all, were you, did you still have your mental faculties? <clears throat> and he said to all appearances, outward appearances, he was dead. But he still had his mental faculties and he still worked. He was still working and knowing the truth until finally he broke through it, woke up, as tonight's subject, woke up and walked out. And that, that, I remember the readers telling me people were talking for months about that, that wonderful experience. Then I went back to that same church that I grew up in many years later, only a few years ago, and there were some visitors I'd never seen before like a family almost. And at the testimony meeting, they, they got up 
And they related a testimony about a relative of theirs uh, that was sick on the, um, on, the east, on the west side here of New York. And they called a practitioner. The practitioner was Laura Lathrop. The Lathrops were students of Mrs. Eddy. They were sent to start Second Church, New York City. And Laura, when she, Laura arrived at the townhouse, the doctors were in the par filling out the death certificate. Laura went upstairs and brought the woman down alive. And the doctors ripped up the death certificate. Yes, the Christ is, in Christian science is still overcoming death to this day. And we may, must never give in to the belief of death because as the readers point out, it's just a dream. And if we really knew it was a dream, we could repeat just as these two people repeated, we could repeat that today. Thank you for Christian Science. Thank you. To continue on with the previous testimony, <clears throat> I worked with a practitioner for many years. I had met her originally in New York. Uh, she had moved to New York uh, from Connecticut and then she moved to Boston. And while in Boston, I still worked with her. Uh, and she related to me uh, at some point early in my association with her that she had brought two people uh, from the dead back to, to life. Uh, obviously, her practice took off like crazy <laughs> once that happened, because word got around. Um, my understanding is that when the nurse or the family member uh, informs the practitioner that the patient has passed on, that the practitioner works for 30 minutes. And uh, this she did. I don't know if that's a rule, but this is what I understand. Uh, this she did, and she brought two people back to life. Uh, the first words of one of them was, it's too hard. <laughs> but nevertheless, she, uh, th this man uh, was, was brought back to life. More than that, I don't know. Um, I uh, would like to um, uh, testify to a very quick healing on Sunday, uh, not nearly as dramatic. Um, I had, uh, on Saturday, my neck started hurting, and I realized it was uh, um, uh, from a, a new exercise at the gym. And uh, by the nighttime, it had started to move inside my mouth, into my gums, the pain, and all that kind of thing. And I was able to get to sleep, and I was able to get to church, and I was praying off and on about it. Um, and the, the pain would abate, uh, and then it would return. Um, I worked during the lesson sermon, uh, in spite of the fact that that is a violation of a manual bylaw, which uh, Mrs. Eddy states prayers must be for the congregation, the people present, and not for oneself. Nevertheless, I thought, well, I've got to get through this service. And um, uh, it didn't really abate very much at that point. Uh, I did get through the service. And after, uh, after I then started working for the service, the protection of the service afterwards, um, the pain uh, abated and almost completely disappeared. But I thought, let me call a practitioner uh, after lunch, and let me just um, relate to her uh, as a belief of a, of a tight musculature in the neck or whatever, but it really is the belief in uh, uh, that the body is material, that the body is personal, that it is mortal and subject to uh, change. Uh, change for the better, but uh, since it's mortal, mostly change for the worse. And that if it could be in one place and then radiate to another place, that was an example of sympathetic animal magnetism. So uh, the practitioner did not answer the phone. Her machine was on. And I related this story for about a minute, a minute and a half, uh, and said, I'm home if you wish to call. And if not, you know, I know you're working. 
And I, um, I, I, get, I get often very magnetized to a problem in the attempt to overcome the problem. But somehow, after I hung up the phone, I thought, well, um, I, th I think I did something. I, I just went to do something. I think I played Wordle or something. Something, you know. Uh, and I realized about 15 minutes later that the entire claim, the entire suggestion, uh, was completely gone. Um, and I have had these kinds of issues and sometimes had very nice and quick healings uh, and sometimes arduous uh, healings. Uh, but this was completely gone. And I was very grateful because I was very uncomfortable. And um, I spoke to that practitioner today about something else and thanked her for her work on Sunday. And we didn't talk too much about it, but she really focused on that we really have to get a better sense of the infinitude of God. And that in that infinitude, nothing else can exist but good. Uh, health, strength, uh, harmony, etc. And that error has no place and it cannot be localized, um, which is, I think, part of the problem is we say, well, this hurts, that hurts, this is wrong, this is, but that's animal magnetism that says error is real and it can have a place within our experience and within our embodied experience. Um, so um, I'm grateful for uh, the help of the practitioner. I'm grateful for that lesson on soul and body and grateful that the church service helped me along the way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the readings. I think many Christian scientists wake up uh, with the hymn, this is the day the Lord hath made. Be glad, give thanks, rejoice, stand in his presence unafraid, and praise lift up thy voice. All perfect gifts are from above, and all his blessings show the amplitude of God's dear love, which every heart may know. Uh, this, uh, this, is, this wake up hymn <laughs> uh, is a great way to start the day, and it raises thought uh, right away, out of a, a sense of, oh, well, you know, how, how awake am I yet? And, and uh, it, it's um, uh, one of the other ways, uh, one of the questions is, well, if waking up, and, and the lesson tonight was really focusing on waking up from the belief of uh, living in matter and death, that awakening is to um, uh, realize God's life. God is life and present, and that's, that life is eternal. And God is our life. We reflect God. We're always at one with God. Um, these spiritual truths are the way to attack uh, any claim of discord. Um, there was a wonderful uh, article, this week's lesson in Christian Science Churches have a, has a topic that's very scary, it's very long <laughs> and uh, animal and mag ancient and modern necromancy alias mesmerism and hypnotism denounced. And that's a mouthful and it's <laughs> words that aren't in common parlance. Uh, uh, I had a teacher once, uh, well, my teacher in Christian science uh, put it in a little thumbnail and said, this lesson is about how not to be fooled. And uh, there's, Mrs. Eddy talks about the investigations of animal magnetism back in the days of Benjamin Franklin in France and um, that they looked at it and came to the conclusion that there wasn't anything to it. Um, this article that I read was saying, was emphasizing and saying these words, magnetism, animal magnetism, hypnotism, they're terms. They aren't realities. And the, um, and it goes, went on to talk about if you're trying to fix 
a material problem, if that's your thought process, stop. To do that is to make a reality of the problem. Well, if you don't approach it that way, how, how do you approach it? And the, uh, the approach is basically waking up, not to give reality. Uh, I think the, the starting point in, in, Christ, in Sunday school terms is you start with God is love, and God is the, the only cause and creator, and God, lo you know, the, the give them L. God loves you, God is love, and you're loved, loving, lovable, and lovely. And to embrace those because God is love is the foundation from which to say, well, what follows if, if God is love? And, and plus with the other synonyms, God is life, eternal life. God is soul, the unchanging, constant, governing, blessing, energizing, um, existence of good um, and all these sp the spiritual facts help us to wake up not to make a reality of sin disease or death but rather to say there there's no room for them in uh, in the uh, creations of love uh, as the speaker uh, former speaker said that uh, with a better sense of the infinity of God, the ever presence, um, there isn't any room for discord. You know, this is, these are spiritual facts and they're to be used to reverse material evidence. And they're, in Mrs. Eddy's proposition, is that this is, their, that's the spiritual facts are the reality and the contradiction of them is the unreality and to have your thought with the spiritual fact is to be awake. Um, I'm very grateful for these teachings of Christian science for ways of disciplining and controlling our thought and bringing thought in a, a, a harmony with and accord with uh, God's goodness. Thank you. I'm uh, grateful to be here tonight um, visiting, and uh, thank you for the readings. Uh, they were very much in tune with something that our family uh, went through this past week, actually, and um, the, the principles are all there, but uh, there is um, some practical medical steps that were taken. Um, my father is quite el elderly in human belief, and he was um, a lifelong Christian scientist, but uh, ended up in a non-science facility, and um, we knew things were kind of challenging, but uh, weren't really expecting a call like this. There had just been some things happening where he was not well, and um, they were doing what their highest sense of right was, and I just didn't feel that it was in tune 100%, and I just got the feeling something was off, and um, after a few days of this, uh, we'd gotten a phone call from the facility saying that he had gone unresponsive and they'd sent him to the hospital. Um, I immediately knew that God was his life, and he was protected and taken care of, and we were there to support whatever next steps were going to be with God's direction every step of the way. And um, we had a son graduating from high school and felt that we were in our right place and we knew that we could be praying and loving for no matter where we were and that God was protecting um, during these times and we didn't have to feel that we had to do one or the other. And um, I had practitioner support for myself and also indirectly for my father. He's 
uh, known him for a while and just wanted to support the the process for all of us. And after graduation, it became clear that um, from some of the comments being made on the telephone that we needed to get up and visit. It was a, a distance away and uh, we also brought in some other family from out of state and um, God said, well, you need, you need to go. It's, uh, now's the time to go. And so we, we all went out uh, to where my dad was and they, the thought was that they just didn't want to do a certain pr procedure where he was, they just didn't think, uh, frankly, he would survive, and so we uh, immediately got to work as a family, just um, knowing that God was showing the way, and that um, God had everyone wrapped in his love and care. Um, some of the family is not practicing Christian science, and so I had to, as being the POA, I had to be respectful of where everybody was, and just listening, and um, as time went on, it was a natural discussion with my father and wanted to really feel where he was in this process, and he said, I'm, I'm going to live, I want to live, and um, we're, we're, we're going to do whatever we need to do, and I'm not ready to give up, and so we um, talked to the facility there, and they offered some alternative suggestions. Um, and from human belief, they, none of them really felt that they were very good options. And we had to just really listen as, what is God saying here? If God is our life and we're being loving to everyone trying to do their highest sense of right, um, let's take the practical steps since Dad is wanting to to move forward and, and live. And so we um, had this opportunity to be moved to another facility. And again, they were saying a lot of dire predictions and just really filling thought with um, lots of things that needed to be healed and prayed about. And I worked with the practitioner the, this final day before decisions were being made. And we, we, we just agreed that we're putting it all in God's hands. He's running the show, there's no doctors or surgeon, my dad, it's, everybody's um, listening to God, and he's directing uh, the wisdom and the occasion for a victory um, over error, so they, uh, they were able to do a particular procedure that, um, again, that they felt was very dangerous, but they felt it was really the only option to go, and they were saying, oh, things won't be good, and so on and so forth. Well, um, to wrap this up, it was, uh, God took care of him all the way. Um, there were no issues during the procedure, no issues coming out of the procedure, and he had um, a harmonious uh, recovery over the last few days, and um, so much so that we were able to leave, and the other family was able to be there to support him the last few days while we made our way east to attend annual meeting later this week. And um, uh, he was returned to his uh, regular home environment facility yesterday and um, just so grateful for the teachings of Christian science and how they can be implemented into any situation and the um, just working together for good at all times. Thank you again for your readings. Thank you. And thank you all for your testimonies and support and prayers and presence. Let's conclude the meeting with singing hymn number two. I'll read the whole poem. A glorious day is dawning and o'er the waking earth, the heralds of the morning are springing into birth. In dark and hidden places, there shines the blessed light. The beam of truth displaces the darkness of the night. The advocates of error foresee the glorious morn and hear in shrinking terror the watchword of reform. It rings from hill and valley. It breaks oppression's chain. 
A thousand free men rally and swell the mighty strain. The watchword has been spoken. The light has broken forth. Far shines the blessed token upon the startled earth. To hearts and homes benighted, the blessed truth is given, and peace and love united point upward unto heaven. Number two, 